Good morning. Uh, my name is Hallelujah, and uh, currently my home base is from Debra Marcos University. And thank you for getting this chance for presenting open access and the role of higher education institutions. I do have some points to present, and as well, there are some points that I left for open discussion for the whole uh, participants here in the hall. So uh, these are the outlines. Uh, actually, already Professor Roberto has described open access, but I may look from different perspectives in order to more understand the open access. So we will see what we mean by open access. I'll try to compare open access with open data and open science, and we will see why open access is important. Uh, I'll try also to compare the traditional publishing and the open access publishing scenario. Uh, we'll try also to present to you uh, the ways that we can pay for open access or who is going to pay for that. Uh, I'll try to the importance of policies, why we need policy. And finally, what can be the role of higher education institutions in our context in relation to open access. So why I'm motivated toward this, this open access? The first thing, uh, as you know, it was in core paper that we were publishing our research. That moved towards the digital text. It doesn't stop there. The digital texts were in isolated computers. And from that time onwards, we don't have those isolated computers that stand alone for researchers working in their environment. And instead, nowadays, we do have global computers. And these computers are connected with a number of data sources. So much of the information needed to do research is available nowadays in our computers. Without moving anywhere, our computers are full of digital sources as far as they do have global connections. If that is the case, librarians should understand about the importance of open access. So the objective on this presentation or specific time is going to be in order to show you the usefulness of open access. Because the more you understand the usefulness of that technology, the more you are going to be part of it. So librarians can be part of open access if they understand the perception or the usefulness of the technology according to time. So the first thing is open data. What we mean by the word open data? Taking the definition, a data that is openly available over the internet or data that should be freely available to everyone to use and republish as they wish without restriction from copyright, patent, or other mechanisms of control. So by making data open, researchers or people can analyze it, they can compare, they can put a benchmark, and they can find even other patterns that the original data collector has never seen. Therefore, we should have open data, which is different from actually public data. Data in a public format means data that's already assembled and put in some format. It may be analyzed, aggregated, but presented for the public. So open data is not public data. Open data is not also open source. People may perceive that open data and open source are different. Open source moves towards the software technology. That means a software that drives its license with the public. On that context, we call it open source software. So libraries do have different open source softwares, but open source software and the public data are different with open data. And open, science, open access is the next thing. If you have your data, then you make your data accessible for everyone without uh, much trouble or without restriction or constraints or barriers. So at that time, we call it is open access. Open access means making peer-reviewed scholar manuscripts freely available via the internet and permitting any user read, download, copy, distribute, print, search, or link to the full text of these articles, as well as crawl them for indexing, pass the data or the software to some others with a lawful purpose. 
and it is without financial, legal, or technical barriers. And here, we can have a number of data formats that we can put in open access. For example, we may have journal articles, we may have books, we may have chapter of the book, monographs, or other types of data. As well, we may have different types of digital encodings, such as text, data, image, audio, video, multimedia, and even executable codes. But the definition of open access emanates from the research perspective. Therefore, when we discuss here open access, we are focusing open access in relation to research articles or research manuscripts, because the initial definition was from the research perspective. And if we are considering from the research perspective, we are considering open access to be open from barriers. And the most widely used two barriers are price and copyright. How we can make our data free of charge and free of copyright or restrictions in the environment. Remember, open access is more than just free access. When we say open access, we are not just saying everything is free. Open access is related with institutionalization. Most of the time when we talk about open access, we are bringing research products towards the institution. You may have your homepage or universities or higher educations, so we are discussing in favor of that instead of being in the public. The other thing that goes nowadays is open science. Open science is also an, a third similar term with open data and open access. Open science concentrates towards on collaboration collaboration of research workers. Therefore, the conduction of science in a way that others can collaborate and contribute where research data, lab notes, and other research process are freely available with the term that allow reuse, redistribution, and reproduction of the research. So we have open science, which is related to open access, but open science is the collaboration of research workers. And open science can be defined from this four different perspectives or goals. One of them is transparency. We need transparency in experimental methodology, observation, and collection of data. So if we move to open science, it's not only the research product. Your methodology should be clearly there. How you use it, how you come up with that. Everything should be transparent. The other thing, it should be available for the public. So the data that you have already gathered, not only the research product, the data itself should be available for others for reusability. And it should be publicly accessible. With it is transparency and with different scientific communications. And the accessibility should be on web-based. It's not on some limited locality, but it should be available web-based in order to facilitate scientific collaboration. Why we need open access? There are a number of important that I got when browsing on the Inargo, benefits of open access for the society. But here I put only five of the basic points. One, the access will increase with a low or remove the price at all. Therefore, we are going to have access of those data or research with minimum price when the institution is either working with that or almost without any price. The other one is when we have open access, we do have immediacy. That means the research that's going to be presented for the audience is going to be with a quicker availability. The other one is stimulating effect. When we are discussing about open access, we are not in some specific journal that are dedicated for some subject or specific subjects, but people are going to have the every subject there. Therefore, the one who is working in ICT may side by side also browse about biology. The one who is working on biology also, he may come up with some link or some notes or some other data in relation to other science aspects or other social researches. Therefore, he may be uh, stimulated to work with other researchers. He may be stimulated to work with other disciplines also. So instead of dedicated journals with a specific subject, if we come up with open access, our probability of working with others and other knowledge area is going to be much, much higher.
That's the, what I mean by the stimulating effect. The other one is the impact in the citation. The more your journal is going to be on the open access, the impact factor in the citation is going to increase because it's accessible with a number of users all over the world instead of subscriber journal articles in some specific publications. The other one is search options. Yes, indeed. If it is widely available, it can be easily searched and it can be also easily shared because you don't have a restriction to share your data among others. These are the most important points why we need open access. And these are the comparison with the tradition vis-a-vis -vis the open access. One, visibility, yes I said, the visibility of open access is going to increase than traditional publications or some subject specific or journal publications with price. The cost, actually when we say open access, we have some amount of costs for processing that may be there. Therefore, initially both of them measure the same cost or some amount of cost because when you are uploading, when you are saving your hard disks, your spaces, people working there, that initial cost may be there on both. But the difference arises in the post acceptance. After your journal is already there on the open access, the price or the cost is going to be completely different because on the post acceptance, the fees are minimal or an institution may have their own collaboration work in relation to open access. But in the traditional, you have to subscribe for some limited period of time or yearly or based on your agreement. And traditional requests per page also. When you are also sometimes uploading for traditionals, you may be also requested per page. And if your data size is much, the cost is going to increase. And also higher subscription, especially some dedicated journals or some journals that are in specific subjects may also request higher subscription amount. Due to this, the cost in open access is going to be minimal. Prestige, here is the contradiction in open access or the controversy. When you see the prestige, most of the time this moves towards the traditional journals. Because people want the traditional journals in order to get promoted in their area, in order to get the impact factor already known, in order to be counter their citation factors and so on, because these traditional journals do have long history. They have been publishing a number of journals and you may be also requested when you are coming and asking some status change in your academic career, you may be requested, ah, is that a reputable journal? What is the impact factor? Okay, which journal you have published your research? This matters in your professional career. Due to that, the prestige moves toward the traditional. However, nowadays, the citation and the impact factor of open access is getting much, much higher. They are coming because it is a new era, and due to that, the citation and the impact factor is not as high as traditionals in the career development. However, the prestige, they are also coming nowadays toward this getting acceptance. The speed, yes indeed it is high in open access. The time from acceptance to publication is significantly shorter in open access compared with traditional journals. What are the types of open access? How we can, or which one can be there as open access? As Professor has already mentioned, we do have the gold open access, we do have the green open access, we do have the hybrid, as well as we do have the bronze and the black. The golden open access moves toward this publishing on scholarly journals. There are journals which are on that path, on the open access. If we are publishing on those journals, we are following the gold open access. <coughs> The green is toward the subject based or institutional repository. For example, if Gondar University do have its own research in the repository or in the university, we call it is a green open access because it's institutionalized repository which it's using for making the research available. The hybrid is the one, it may have some specific subjects or individual journals which are made open which are made open. Therefore, if we have some of them which are open, we call it is a hybrid. Some of them are closed, some of them are open. On that moment, we call it is hybrid open access. We do have the bronze and the black. 
The bronze is the one that makes freely available journals article with no license at all. And there are others who are illegally accessing. However, people may call them illegally accessing. There are journals that are accessible with traditionals, with payments. But if they are making those journals or research products accessible, without a payment when they are held in the traditional, we call their illegal open accesses. You can look the links here, I have already put in the statistics in relation to closed bronze, hybrid, gold and green in relation to specific subjects. That's already summarized online when I was browsing. Uh, how the payment scenario can be there in open access? Because we may have some pre-processing in order to make it available. One is the publisher pay model. On the publisher pay model, the money or the amount of money for advertising and societal membership, the publisher may cover it because they may get through advertising. For example, if you look Facebook, we are opening our Facebook freely, but through advertisement, they do have their own collection. Similar to that, publishers may accept your research and it may be available, but they may pay through advertising and some other societal memberships, and that's what I understood. Readers pay model, research journals you may subscribe, or you may pay per article. On that moment, that journal may be open. On this scenario, we do have the, research, the reader pay model. Authors sometimes may have their submission fee or publication fee, and they may cover it, and they may make open. Therefore, either the publisher, the reader, or the author may pay. These are the three different scenarios. What are the potential barriers for open access? I'm looking at these barriers, barriers uh, in relation to Ethiopian scenario. According to the global open access research, the three basic constraints that put on the open access of the Ethiopian context is one is the internet speed in which Alain's research was also aligned with it. Therefore, the low internet bandwidth is one factor in relation to open access. The other one is finance, to acquire heavy duty scanners or creating digital copies and so on, and also storage. The other one is lack of clear institutional and national policy. Therefore, the internet bandwidth is going to be covered by the ICT infrastructure. We have to move toward that. Finance, we have to get different funders in order to cover that finance. Policy issue, it is going to be our issue. The librarians are part of the policy issue. We have to design a policy. We have to come up with policies because we are the one there in between the research products and between the users. So librarians should be there in order to support how we can design a policy, and I will have a discussion point that you are going to come up with what type of policy we need in relation to open access. Uh, this is the for framework. Uh, when I'm considering the framework, I'm thinking about we can design the framework from the stakeholders' perspective. If we know the stakeholders, we can come up with what are the policy issues in relation to open access. So, in order to discuss the policy issue, we have to know about the responsibility of each stakeholder. And when we come to the universities, the stakeholders or the main stakeholders are going to be four. One, the university as an institution. When you say the university, it may be the management, it may be the law or the legal issue, or other processes, it may be the ICT. All these are included in the university. And the library separately which are linking the users with the researchers or giving the service. The researchers, yes, they are the sources. We have to, should have also policy in relation to that. Finally, the responsibility of the users also should be included. Even though we are saying it is open access, we should have some rules and regulations in relation to the users. So, you can see most of the gold open access do have their own uh, sponsors in relation to funding is, but when we come to the green, it remains in the universities. It remains in the universities. And what is the responsibility of libraries in relation to the green? Because we are the one going on working in green 
open access. So what is the responsibilities of libraries in order to design policies? What is our responsibility? If we know the responsibility of librarians, yes, we can move towards designing a policy. So Yared, according to his 2013 research, says users expect university libraries to promote and enhance the accessibility of open access journals in their respective universities. We are supposed to make access to those, those journals in our university. Yes. Therefore, out of his sentence, if we are going to create access for these articles or research products, we should have some stage that we should follow in designing policy for digital repository. So digital repository do have its own life stages to pass. These are the four stages that we should consider. We should have a policy in relation to producing the data. Any kind of data can be there, but how we can produce it, one. Second, how we can store the data, where they are accessible quickly and keep what is necessary. Fourth, how we can manage that data. Management of the data is also, and another one is how we can make it reusable. If we have certain rules, regulations in relation to this, we do have a good open access in relation to the green in the institution. And why people go to the library? Why we need to design a policy? One thing, people move to a library when they are in doubt. Yes. When they are working with their researches and when they are not clear with something, they move to the library. Nowadays, they don't move by their own foot. Instead, they move to the library through the networks. So they are going to reach to our society through the networks. So we have to be there waiting for the users to come through the networks because we do have a global connections. So when they face a doubt, they are coming. And we are there to solve their doubt. And librarians do not know everything, but they just know how to find everything. So we are supposed to help them how to find and help them on their doubt. If that is the case, what are the responsibilities of the libraries according to the open access in relation to Cambridge? They come up with a number of responsibilities that libraries should play as a responsibility. The first thing, the librarian should always update their e-information. And our e-information is our e-books our air researches that we have. And in our open access, we are discussing about research manuscripts. Therefore, we have to update that always. Libraries should create awareness. We are the one to create awareness for the whole higher education institution community. It may be students, it may be the academic staff or teachers, it may be researchers, it may be administrative staffs as well. So we are supposed to create awareness in a relation to open access for all this community in the university. And we have to take the initiative. If we sit idle or remain idle with the previous books or published books, no more user will come to the library from now onwards. Or the number of users to visit our library is going to be minimum if we are remaining without taking the initiative in open access. Because the books are there for everyone, they are coming. Similar, the researches were there in printed format. Similarly, we have to take the initiative also in open access because nowadays that digital record is there in the libraries and no one is supposed to take the initiative. In other words, we are going to lose our job if we are against open access or making access of those digital repositories in the library. So we have to take the initiative. This is 100% true. The other one, we should give training how to use those open accesses. After those, they are there, we should have some training mechanism and we should design training every year for newcomers or for existing staffs. We should have training for students and others. The other one is we have to keep assisting. We said they are there when they are facing a doubt and we have to help their doubt. Therefore, we have to assist researchers in depositing their publication in the institutional repository with timely, as well as how to access. We have to preserve it for publication. And the preservation of materials in the digital repository is also one of the responsibilities that the libraries should play. 
we have to facilitate request a copy. If someone asks a copy, how we can facilitate that request? This is also one responsibility. And I make it green because in the digital repository, we are having this green open access, an institutionalized open access. We should collect, we should store, we should disseminate that information in a relation to our local environment, and this is our responsibility. And based on this responsibility, we should have a policy, we have to design. So, when we know our responsibility, how can we discharge that responsibility needs its own policy, and we have to work on that. And Dr. Margaret has already mentioned, the Ethiopian Librarian Consortium has started working on that, and it's at infant stage. I think it is going to be finalized in the near future when we are working together, and all of us are supposed to work on how we can create policy in order to discharge this responsibility. I will leave the other four discussion points. What is the responsibility of universities? Now we have to take people from legal, management, ICT, and we have to make them discuss how we can make that institutional policy come true. And remember again, it is our responsibility to create them awareness. If we create awareness for them about an institutional repository, yes indeed, the university different partners or par uh, partners are going to come and take their own role in relation to designing a policy. Also, it's our responsibility to create awareness for researchers, and researchers are going to come again with their own responsibility. What can be their responsibility? It's left for researchers. And it needs, again, awareness creation in a relation to open access. Users, yes, indeed. We have to create awareness in a relation to digital repository and open access, and users should come again, designing their policy towards this open access. And thank you.